<laughs> Hello, everybody out there in the universe. This is C Square from the Invisible Wires podcast. Um, I'm proud to announce our first Invisible Wires podcast sponsor. And it's Justin Pizzuli, licensed realtor with the Real Estate Gallery in the states of Ohio and Kentucky. Justin has 10 years of experience. Uh, he has a five-star rating on Zillow. I recently bought a home without a realtor, and boy, did it get hairy. Um, but the seller and I had many awkward moments. Things got real foggy and confusing. They thought I said one thing. I thought I said another. I was handling things via email. Um, it was with an, an elderly lady, and um, I didn't want to be mean. So it was just, it was very, uh, I wish I would have had a realtor then. And buying through... Uh, through Justin Bazzuli, using has M as the in between. It's never been so easy, and and, and and you don't need to take it from me. Um, a recent client said, uh, concerning Justin, Justin is prompt and respectful and charismatic. Justin is, you know, he's no high pressure salesman. Instead, he is thoughtful and thorough. Um, he he highlights the positives and the potential of the properties as opposed to like a strong arming someone into making an offer. And he's just generally fun to talk to, which makes him an even better seller's agent and an approachable buyer's agent. This former client goes on to say, if I were to sell my home or buy another, Justin Bazzulli would be the first man I would call. So that's a customer review, already satisfied customer. Another benefit of Justin is he's one good looking dude. I mean, if you want a hot realtor, he's the guy to call. You don't want some ugly, smugly Realtor, you want, you know, someone represents you that is aesthetically pleasing. So now's the time to list as homes are recently selling at the 10% more than market value. And Justin follows all the National Association of Realtors COVID safety precautions. You know, um, he wear, he wear a mask. I've even seen him once. He, he was wearing a hazmat suit to, to show a house. And I mean, it just it means Justin just goes the distance. So if you're looking for a domicile that you and your family can enjoy, for years to come and, and, and looking for a great buying or selling experience, call Justin Pizzuli at 740-464-7283. That's 740-464-7283. This is in the states of Ohio and Kentucky. Check out Justin on the website there. You can see a picture of him there. You can also uh, contact him at thepizzuli at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-P-I-Z-Z-U-L-L-I at gmail.com. Again, Justin, thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. And I now give you Invisible Wires. Welcome. Friends. Lord's Lord of them, and a friend will not say never, <laughs> and the welcome will it's not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know, and a lifetime's not too long. Sounds good. To live as friends. I had to sing that for church when I was young. <laughs> Here's a six pack for $21. What is going on here? This is like crack. That stuff? Yes. They make all kinds of different ones, don't they? They make like a... Yeah, but Neurobliss, the white raspberry... You actually feel a difference. Like... Oh, yeah. And it's delicious. It's so good. If you can make it really cold... Oh, dumb. I used to buy them at... They have a sleep one. Mm-hmm. I love to take that when I'm driving. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear the. Flavor. I have to get a good orange sleep, Neurobliss, you can and hear the flavor. What? Ooh. Sponsored yeah. by. Sponsored by Neurobliss. <laughs> ah.
we will we 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 will endorse the neural blitz. That's that's our goal, I think. I mean, it's only 30, 15 calories per serving, and there's mm. one serving. There's one that helps you sleep. Yeah, and then there's energy one. Yeah. There's another one. I I used to get the energy. It's called Sonic Neuro Sonic. That's the energy. That's yeah. That's the one that makes you have energy. It also makes you turn into a hedgehog. <laughs> God. Sonic the hedgehog. Sonic the hedgehog. Yeah, that was a good joke. Super fruits. Two hundred milligrams of L-thiamine. It's gluten free. Oh. It's gluten free. It's got vegan. Vegan. Kosher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did it say kosher on there? Most of everything is Coca-Cola is kosher. And ramen noodle. You're not even hooked in. Oh, this is mighty. Do you want me to switch to the other one? No. I'm not hooked in, but I can hear myself talk. Well, we have nine mics in here, so. Technical difficulties. We'll be hooked in in a moment. Don't you worry. Now you're hooked in. How was your day, sir? Um. Sucked. <laughs> well, I can hear myself now. Wow, a little reverb though. Testing. Okay. Well, I need to get rid of this gum. Yeah, that's a podcast no-no for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is Justin doing cunnilingus during the podcast? With that? We've been uh, recording this mic the whole time. That's good. Okay. Professionalism. Mm. This, yeah, this episode is called Professionalism. Go watch it. Is that the Yankees? Okay. All the children of the world, black okay. and yellow. Wait. Black, red, black, black and yellow. Red, yellow. red, black, and yellow. Black and white. We I don't think it really matters what order they're in. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Oh. Uh, you're, wa- you're watching the Yankees during this? You want to co- just, co- just commentate the whole time? Leading up. And here's the O2 to Urshela. He digs in. Pitcher sets. And here's the pitch. And it's driven at a third base and a terrific grab by the third baseman. <laughs> Ordonez. I don't know what his, uh, his name is. Excuse me. We are starting off great aud- audibly on this podcast. So, episode six, here we are. Here, here we are. Wow. Episode six already. Episode it's, six. It's like Star Wars. We should we should really release all these episodes <laughs> yeah, in reverse. Start, st- yeah, start yeah. at four. Mm-hmm. And then... Is there a more confusing timeline than Star Wars movies? Because, you know, you have the original series. You know, they're like the... The episode one through six. Yeah. Then the, you have all the side stories where you have to try, kind of try yeah. to place them on a timeline. Yeah, you have the cartoon, and they're in different mediums. So there's like, there's cartoons. Right. Of them. And then you have like Rogue One. It's like episode three and a half. You know? Yeah. Which was one of the best ones. <clears throat> it I was. Felt like. It was great. I felt like Rogue One was Rogue one of the one? best. Rogue One was one of the best, I feel. What? Yeah, Rogue One was good. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't think so. Is that the one where they're... It's like the paradise looking island that they're on or world? At the end? At the end, yeah. yeah uh-huh. just, I don't... I, I feel like the the character development just wasn't there compared to like all the other characters that Star <clears throat> Wars has. Like you walk away like someone died. Doesn't someone die? Spoil alert. And you're like, oh, they died, whatever. Or like... the And the chick, you felt like you never really knew her. I don't know. Like I liked... 
the uh, Jar Jar Binks. I like the <laughs> other stories. I turned were good. Turned down the volume. Of, of yeah, the Jar Jar Binks, the most hated. <laughs> well, those three character. movies were the worst. Oh yeah. Well, uh, Revenge of the Sith was good. Yeah, it was okay. Like that was. I mean, out of the three. It was definitely the best one. I don't know. I like the I like one, two, and three. I don't, but it was also came out when I was a kid. So. That's why you like it. Yeah, yeah. Like three is amazing. I think I one really... not so much, but I think two and three are. It's great. like they just figured out CGI. Yeah, it does look like it does look shitty. But as far as the story, it's so much more complicated than the new ones. Like it's so political, and there's so much like hidden meaning. There are. It is really political. It is true. Just, Which kids love that part, right? <laughs> when they go to the Senate and they have those, <laughs> like, those, these, those hovering uh, Senate chairs or whatever. How do they vote there? So I guess they have some kind of. Did they ever talk about the internet no. on Star Wars? Like, how do they? I guess there's a green button and a red button somewhere <laughs> you just press on the floating thing, and it, and it goes to some <laughs> droid, and the droid yeah. spits out the thing. Yeah, the I love the page fa- droid. I love the facade. <laughs> the facade of the Senate. It's like at the end of the day, like it's, you know, it's, it's an empire. It's like, does the Senate really matter? Like, obviously well, back then it was a democracy until Darth Vader took over. Then it was the, then, pa- it, then well, it was a tyrant. C or a tyrant. <laughs> a, a dictatorship. Like Darth Vader. I like tyrant. That's pretty... And he, the whole point was that he, you know, he didn't think democracy was working. The Republic the empire had failed and he we, they needed a so there's the theory that darth vader is actually the good guy the you know and the, the the bad people are the rebels there's a whole theory behind that man we've already gotten way <laughs> way too in the weeds with this well you Star can Wars. always say that about you could say that even in the even in the mandalorian there's like a, a cameo not a cameo, but a mention where like people are like, "Yeah, we felt safer under the the empire." Well, there has to be structure in the galaxy. Yeah, right. Like right. everybody, I know we have an anarchist in the room, <laughs> yeah, but there has true. to be there that's has true. to be a structure in the galaxy, especially in an alien galaxy. Like, yeah, like, geez, there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah, you gotta have some kind Job of. Job of the hut. You've got somebody, rogue bandits and. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to bring some kind of order. Yeah. Gosh, I, now I think I just became part of the dark side. I, 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 yeah. I think yeah. I just was convinced. Yeah. It would have been so easy if I had Jedi powers. Like, well, I just that makes sense, Darth Vader, and I would just <laughs> go over and bow to him. I mean, so it's like yeah. I would just really be down with that. There really is no. I mean, is there such thing as? I guess there is, of absolute evil, and absolute yes. good. There is I anyone guess. anyone who eats mint chocolate chip <laughs> is pure evil. They are. I thought about. I've, I really have been grieved by that lately. I don't know why. And people that like. I mint just chocolate hate chip. mint chocolate. Ew, if you get it like an Andes candy, like they're. I don't I just know. had a peppermint patty on the way over here. So. Well, that's different. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, not green. <laughs> no, it's, a peppermint patty is good. An Andes candy is not. No, good. I like them both. Well, they're not yeah, the same. Yeah. Mint There's chocolate. Sign me up. Mint chocolate chip. I mean, you know, those those two things don't go together. In my, I only eat spumoni. Oh, <laughs> whoa, peppermint cannolis. Ew, oh. that'd be terrible. Well, it's the same thing as chocolate and mint. Yeah. I don't know. I could do that. A peppermint patty's good. No. And an Andy's to me is not. Where are you guys on Almond Joy and Mounds? Ooh, those are some of my favorite, man. <laughs> Neither. I have no. Are you 80 years old? I Seems know. like an old person I love thing them. to eat. Are they? I don't know. Maybe I'm it's, just they just or candy I bars. I love coconut. Or, I, I hate coconut. I don't either. I don't like the coconut, coconut either. Best new candy bar, I think, is the Fast Break. Newer. So what's that? A Reese's? Reese's? It's a Reese's yeah, and, a, the, and a what Reaper. together? I forget. It's Reaper. wafer. We, wafer yeah. and Reese's? Well, and also Take 5. Oh, take yeah. Five whatchamacallit. Take 5 is... Ooh, man. Yes. Oh, whatchamacallit. Stupid. It's stupid good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's the most brick-like 
<laughs> of the candy bars, though. It's very. Man, I haven't had a but candy it's... bar in a long time. You just had a peppermint patty. Well, it was a sugar-free Russell Stover, so that <laughs> I am an old man. <laughs> Carry him around in my pocket to give to kids at church. Werther's. <laughs> There's always that guy. There's always the candy. You know, he'll slip you the yeah. candy guy at church. Don't tell your mom. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I never understood the creepy Joe Biden stuff. Because, like, I would just think about guys that I went to church. Like, old men that I went to church with would touch my hair and, like, do creepy things, quote-unquote, that Is people Justin, would consider. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Justin... Getting ready to confess. No, his I'm saying like, I, I don't, I don't see how. I, I think he's just like an old school guy who is touchy, like some guy that you would go to church with. Like he's not perverted. He's just like likes kids, and I don't know, like <laughs> not in a bad way. Like we have to. I feel, I feel like we have to over sexualize everything. I realize I'm probably the only person, and I don't like Joe Biden. Don't get me wrong, but like. I don't know that maybe that's, that's a confrontational maybe opinion that's that I part, don't think that he's creepy. Maybe that's part of it. I mean, we are, we do hypersexualize everything. That's true. I think we do. That's everybody's, true. And I mean, I like I work in social work. Everybody's more than everybody. Mm-hmm. That's just the first thing we think. Well, I had, right. we, we had an incident recently where they had, a, you know, a kid was referred to foster care and it was, I reported that he had you know, sexualized behaviors and obviously the first thing you your head goes to is touching molesting you know right, something right, like that right. this kid told his social worker that he liked big boobs 14 year old kid well, who doesn't I mean, he said i like big boobs you have big boobs I and i think they're nice it. he said that to a social worker <laughs> and like they reported that as like sexualized behavior it's like Okay, that would be weird if if he was fourteen and didn't like boobs. Like, yeah, you know, that would... so yeah, it's true. Like, there is a heightened sensitivity to it. At the same time, there's all of this stuff where it's like everyone can be themselves. You know, express yourself sexually. It's all you know. It's normal and natural. But at the same time, like you know, that intersects with like the Me Too movement and yeah. like all of this like yeah. very, you know, yeah, the Me Too movement had a spectrum to it. Like you went on a date with somebody and it didn't go very well, you know, or you had gone on a date with somebody and you went too far and the person didn't want to, you know, but then it went, then you have, uh, what's his name? The producer guy, Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Oh, like yeah. that's the, and the, the Bill Cosby stuff. That's, that's the bad stuff. Right. Right. The drugging right. people. Right. Yeah. Put the roofie in the pudding. Oh, the roof. Do you, you, the... you see that old interview with Courtney Love? And she's like, she's like, do you, or the interviewer on the red carpet was like, do you have any advice for people coming to Hollywood? He's like, yeah, if, Weinst- if Weinstein ever has a party, don't go to it. And this was like 10 years before all this shit wow. came out. <laughs> Courtney Love knows where the bodies are buried. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Courtney Love said that? Yeah. She didn't say she knew where the bodies were buried. No, no I'm, I'm saying she said that about a party. Yeah, like oh, 10 really? years ago. And no one understood it. They just thought it was a joke. But she was like trying to give the signal. So that that's like, you know, like that's a real thing that she was doing. It wasn't like these QAnon people being like, we got to, you see that Star of David and that poster over there? Like <laughs> it wasn't that kind of stuff. It was yeah. like she really was signaling like people to. And it's like someone was so powerful that it took that long for someone to say anything about it. Yeah. Did you guys see well, that? He made great movies. I mean, probably some of the best movies I've ever seen seen are all. Yeah, he made movies. great movies for sure. Yeah. Did you guys see the Courtney Love, Kurt Cobain, Cobain, Cobain documentary on Netflix? The one it's called "Covered in Bleach." Yeah, I've seen that one. Man, it is good. Yeah, and it convinces you. Yes, definitely. but it also uses dramatized scenes to convince you too a little bit. Convinces you of what? Of that he, that she killed him. Oh yeah. Oh. Definitely. You called it the Courtney Love documentary, but she didn't make it, so... Right. It's a documentary about... about her killing her husband. Yes. Killing. Potentially. And it's pretty convincing when you watch it. So is Paul really is dead that Jason makes oh, me watch all the time? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. I am obsessed Talk with Paul McCartney is When dead. we watched that, I was... It changed the Beatles for me. <laughs> like, it changed the Beatles for me totally. I mean, it's so believable. And there's so many, I'm going to doing air quotes clues yeah. mm-hmm. that it's, you're almost well, like it's undeniable that they put that stuff in there. 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't think Paul McCartney is really dead, obviously, but they definitely did LSD and like had the idea. Let's put clues about Paul McCartney being dead in our albums. Like it's certainly because like all yeah. of that stuff is certainly there. And so, you know, they did it on purpose, but it was probably, you know, a, just a head trip. Maybe he died metaphorically on drugs. <laughs> re rewoken his mind. Because they did spend time in I mean, India. finding a guy that looks like him that plays left-handed bass would be a son of a, yeah, we can't hire. He's got talent that talented. Yeah, I don't think they actually faked the, the Paul McCartney. I think that they did do that on purpose. They they put the clues in there, the backward stuff, the album cover clues, all of that. You I mean, think that they It's deliberate. I mean They deliberately was, did it, but it didn't really happen. Yeah. I think they wanted people to think about it cuz they knew I mean, yeah. think about Sgt. Pepper and like these records I mean, Ed, dude, they were on. Paul is always turning away. That, they were, that is the yeah, weirdest thing. They were, they were on all these drugs, and they knew all of the people that were listening to these records were all on drugs. I mean, it was. You know, they did the late, back masking. They did backwards masking and all of that, and like they knew someone was going to be what, on what to was what the they were guy's doing. Name Billy Shears. Or Billy something? Shears. Billy Shears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's actually the first line of, um, Sergeant Pepper's is. I'd like to introduce to you the one and only Billy Shears. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or Billy, you know, or something like that. And the guy that wrote all that is just a freaking genius. I mean, you can't deny like oh, for yeah. him to have come up with all that. <laughs> well, it's I mean, this was around back in like 1970. Like my my parents were young. They remember hearing on the radio like you know, like late night talk radio. They were like discussing this. And like this one guy, you can go look up the broadcast. I think it was in Cleveland, Ohio. A radio broadcaster, like, blew the lid off of it. He's like, you know, radio exclusive, you know, like, we've discovered Paul McCartney is dead. And, like, they did the whole thing. They played, um, you know, all the stuff backwards and talked about the album covers and all of that. So, you know, it's it had been around since, you know, those records came out. Maybe he's really dead. Maybe. maybe he or maybe it's a publicity stunt that's lasted... 50 years. 50, 50 years. <laughs> yes. Did you see that? Speaking of the, not to get off topic, but the Michael Jackson maybe really isn't dead. He faked his own faked his own death. Why do we always think that really famous people fake their own death? <laughs> like, we, Elvis is, like, it's like we can't let go, man. <laughs> like, there's vid video of him getting out of a van or something. Dude, I've, I've seen a, I've seen Michael Jackson impersonators live, and they are, <laughs> I mean, they're convincing. Right. Like, you know, like every dictator, like Saddam Hussein, and like all these people have body doubles. Yeah, and they're all like, yeah, identical. That was one of the theories about Hitler. Yeah, there was a uh, a documentary on maybe Netflix um, about Hitler, and the theory was in the they they took his body double down in the bunker and killed him. You know, and the real Hitler escaped in like these underground tunnels and went to Antarctica. I thought it was Argentina. Or yeah, Argentina, not Antarctica. Um <laughs> they did go to Antarctica though. Um Um the Nazis had some kind of weird doings there in Antarctica too. But yeah, that was that's one theory. There are entire Nazi villages in Argentina. Yeah, that's that's true. They did they did uh where they still performed Nazi experiments until the late seventies. Yeah, like they went to, they did definitely abscond to, to on poor Argentine kid, kids. Yeah, they what was with the Nazis? They did all kinds. Of, it's like they were trying to. Of course, that's the whole like every um, Indiana Jones movies. The Nazis are always doing something right, real nefarious. Let's get the Ark of the Covenant and open it. <laughs> you know, and they're yeah. just well, do crazy. I can't imagine. Yeah. Like, like we need to make a movie where it's Nazis, but they're like doing goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> like that was like <laughs> Nazi Nazis delivering like canned goods to, to like homeless children or something. But they're all blonde like, hair. See, we're not kids. all bad. <laughs> like a world had not had Hitler won. Like what the world would look like. Ooh, that's a good one. Like, oh like gosh! Certainly no Jews. The entire Harvey, yeah, an Harvey entire Weinstein world. would have never yeah. fucked all those people. Yeah. E Epstein <laughs> would have never happened. <laughs> if only Hitler had won. <laughs> Courtney Love would have never been raped by Harvey Weinstein. 
<laughs> Kurt Cobain would still be alive today. <laughs> and Paul would still be dead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's they they are like what is it what is it like to be German? And know that that's part of your history and that no, to every movie, every American American movie is kill kill the Nazis, you know, like what's it like to have that as part of your You're not culture? even allowed to talk about it over there. You get arrested. Like, really? I didn't know that. anything Nazi related. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. People get arrested all the time. <laughs> huh. Have you guys seen Hitler's phone at the Highlands oh. Museum? Like his cell phone? Like his, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he the first cell phone. <laughs> no, the, the Highlands Museum in Ashland has Hitler's desk phone. No, it, it doesn't. Like, yes. The Highland Museum in Ashland, Kentucky. <laughs> They have Hitler. has Hitler's phone. How did we get that piece of <laughs> yeah. history? Someone took it, and they have. And there's it. all kinds of Nazi stuff, you know. Like, how we can, can we confirm it? Is sounds it like some redneck came back from the war and was like, <laughs> "This was Hitler's phone." <laughs> how do we know? It's I mean, I'm sure phone. they have to have some kind of verification, right? It's a museum. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, the word of Cleo. There's, there's there's a big <laughs> golden golden like H inscribed. In this <laughs> This belonged. This the, belonged the phone to has a the phone has a little mustache. <laughs> there's, yeah, the there's program. a little groove in the talking part where his mustache sat. <laughs> Photo of him in the. Have you like, seen it? Like, yes, I've seen what it. What does it look like? Wow, it looks like a phone from the 1930s. Like a. So it looks like a. It's a black, you know, like phone, just. Not a rotary phone. Yeah, I think it is a rotary phone. They had rotary phones then. Huh. Hold on, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna Google it. You yeah. guys, I want to Google a picture of it. It wasn't that long ago. I mean, the Holocaust. Do you think Hitler probably had a lot of phones? Like, is this a certain phone? Like, Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't the only phone Hitler ever. This is his it wasn't personal like, phone. It wasn't like, you know, the Bat Cave. Yeah, like that's, the what was, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> is this the, the Hitler phone? Like, there's a Bat phone? I'm sure he something? had a lot of phones. Yeah. Just not just one. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler had a, like, burner account. <laughs> <laughs> he was a track phone user. He, he definitely would have been, for sure. Okay, it looks like this, but it's black. I just googled Hitler's phone. Is it... So it's another. It's another one of Hitler's phones, huh? Maybe this is the one right here. This looks like it could be the same. The the one, the actual one. That's oh, a... well, okay. Yeah. yeah, very old looking. It's an old looking phone to to the listeners. It's a very old looking dial or uh, dial analog. Phone. Rotary phone. I wonder, just having Googled Hitler's phone, <laughs> you're how on long? A, you're on a list now. Look right here. Here's the one. It's from the Highlands Museum in Ashland, Kentucky, right now. Okay. It oh, is wow. indeed a rotary phone. It's a cool looking wow. phone. It is. What What if we break in and steal Hitler's phone? <laughs> <laughs> what would... How much... I mean, it's definitely worth more than $300, so that's the felony for sure. Yeah. I... I uh, I was in Auschwitz one time, and I, <laughs> I was in Auschwitz. <laughs> Hopefully not in yeah. between 1934. And I, and four. I, I took a little piece of brick from one of the furnaces, and I have it at my house. Really? Yeah. Does, this, does, it, does it speak? To, yeah, it is dark. Do you it is dark. like that? Like the genocide furnaces? Yeah, the the crematorium. God, man. Yeah, I saw. Does it, it speak to you at night? Does it yell out Oof. from the from yeah, history? Frank. <laughs> um, what if everybody did that justin there would be no furnaces left to that's prove true that that's true i'm a terrible person but you think about how many movies have nazis in them oh yeah like it's hundreds a lot there's a new show on amazon called hunters and it's al pacino <laughs> and he hunts down nazis oh, yeah. in america and he kills them like current like now, it's no, it's 1970 something. Does that start off where a guy is grilling and then ends up killing his whole family? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did watch one episode of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was. They could have made it more serious. I think. I don't know. It's. It seems like too jokey. Yeah. To it me. Is. To. Yeah. Did you see Jojo Rabbit? That, no, but, but that was a great. It's one. in my queue to watch. Oh, that was great. It's definitely, that was a brilliant movie. Definitely in my queue to watch. But now that we talked about Nazis, it's variety hour. Hitler didn't kill the Jews. It was all a conspiracy. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. 
Where do you guys stand on Holocaust denial? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I don't understand why you would want to deny that. After, I mean, why? What is the purpose of? It's like I like conspiracies. They're anti-Semitic. I mean, that's definitely true. Yeah, if they're anti-Semitic. Wouldn't they have wanted the Holocaust to have happened? <laughs> you know, true, like, I guess. Like I, I live like nine eleven. Like nine eleven conspiracies are my favorite thing. But it's like then there are the people. It's like. It didn't happen. It was all uh it was all lasers it was all a laser show and like all of this stuff. And it's like wait a second, like we have video proof that it happened. People were there. They're like it yeah, happened. A lot of it's people like, died. Okay. There's a lot of conspiracy theory that you could oh, substantiate really? about nine eleven, but it's like the fact that it didn't happen, I mean, like Yeah, there's the, the, so, you can't really prove it didn't happen, but you could say the why it happened. Right. That's a whole nother level. But it's like imagine like we have that on video. And, like, certainly there's, like, documented evidence of the Holocaust. Yes, there is. But it's happened a long time ago, so it would be easier to, you know, like, oh, you know, there, it was all fake. And yeah. What about the moon landing? Do we think it happened? No. The, the Buzz, uh, did you see what's his name? Bu- convincing. Buzz Aldrin just said the moon landing didn't happen. Really? Yes. Yeah, he did. He did say that. He did say that. He, he said, said Buzz he was Aldrin on Alex said. Jones, yeah. like, ten years ago and said it. And then the other day... he. He was being interviewed by this little girl, like an elementary school girl. Yeah, I saw. I, saw, I think I saw it. And he said something about how, like, they really didn't go to the moon, and like, just like went full scorched earth on this little girl. <laughs> so what is Why that? Why would he say that? Why would he lie about it? I mean, he went. He's been. He's old. He's been on the moon. Allegedly. So, but, allegedly. So why would he say? You know, it is interesting that we really haven't gone to the moon since. That, yeah. Like I think we've been to the moon, but I think from based on nothing other than just stories I've heard from the internet <laughs> that we faked the moon landing because we wanted the Russians to think we got there first before them. Yeah. That's that's possible, for sure. There's another Sputnik. It's uh, I think it's something they're building now to go to Mars. They're calling it Sputnik something, Sputnik 2 or something like that. Sp- is it made uh, out of potatoes? But why <laughs> wouldn't we go back? That's my thing. Why wouldn't we go back? Maybe know. we are there. How do you know? I thought we haven't been to the moon since then. No. Are you sure? No. What? I don't think we have. I'm pretty sure. Look it up. I don't I'm think we've been sure. to the moon since then. I think so. Not like recently. but We'd have a base why by would now. We, why would we look it up? It's just going to give us propaganda. Yeah. Do, are we going to believe what the Google machine says? <laughs> well, if we don't believe it initially happened, why do we believe the, the, yeah. the next thing? They just keep faking different landings. I don't think uh, we've been to the moon since. Do you think we'd have a base there? We'd have a Starbucks? We have know? a base there. We, we have a base on the moon. So you're saying it didn't happen initially, but now we have a base there. No, I'm not saying we didn't go to the moon. I'm saying they faked the moon landing okay. as we... As the one we think about, yeah. One, 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 one. Did you watch? Did you watch that new Moon documentary on Netflix? That was really good. They released a bunch of old footage, and uh, of the moon landing. Yeah, uh-huh. and uh, one of the most interesting things to me was uh, when the astronauts came back, they had to go in an isolation chamber for a week mm-hmm. because they didn't know what like bacteria could be on the moon that would then like destroy the Earth. That's yeah. I, I never knew that. I was, that's smart. Yeah. Did you did you guys hear that astronaut who was on Joe Rogan was talking about how but he it, did he was been in space and he's been in deep sea and they had to put him like when they come up back up to sea level they have to reacclimate their entire body the same thing when they come back to earth from being yeah. you know in yeah. zero gravity spaces it's just very bizarre like you know the pressurized changes and well they took two twins well a group a set of twins sorry and they put one in space for a year, and then one stayed on Earth. And, like, the guy was totally different looking when he came back. He lost all his muscle, mass. His his biology changed completely, apart like, from his brother. Did they have to draw straws <laughs> to see who, who <laughs> gets to really stay happen? on Earth? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sorry, Tom. if you're an astronaut, you you want to go to the... You want to go there, you know? That's the goal. Yeah, you're... and. Have you seen that movie Ad Astra? Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's it's really really good. It's it actually seems like that's what it would be like, but it's and it's like they just want to go farther and farther and farther away. It's almost like there's what's there. 
You know, like then that's I guess the point. Of the movie. Speaking cheese. Speaking of evil, Jeez. by the way, we were talking about good and evil. Yeah. And the and nine eleven. When I went to New York last time, I was there. It was like before Corona, New Year's before coronavirus. Um, I was at the nine eleven memorial, and there was a giant line like for hours and hours, and all the tickets were sold out. And me and a girl I was with at the time we just start like looking around, like, do we want to do this? Like, she came all the way from Finland. <laughs> And I was like, we got to get in here somehow. <laughs> and you met a girl yeah. from Finland. I met a girl. That's a good story. A good we'll story. get into that later. <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, we'll get into that later. You can put that, that down. Probably, if, you can put that down if you want. That's probably if you don't want to hold that or whatever. Just put it wherever it's. Oh, old. that's fine. I can hold it. Okay, whatever you want to do. Um, the shelves and everything. Like and uh, so I met the 9/11 memorial with the girl from Finland. With the girl from uh-huh. Finland. Like, does she can, believe? Does she believe in the Holocaust? Can, <laughs> <laughs> she did say a lot of things like she's never seen so many Jews before as we're walking around really? New York. Yeah. Well, I did take her to a modest Yahoo concert. <laughs> <laughs> she said she felt, away. She said she felt uncomfortable by so many Jews. I was like, uh, this is the most European thing you've ever said. Um, I don't know. They're weird over there, dude. So anyway, um, and so the. One of the workers overhears me, and it was like, "Hey, for fifty bucks each, I'll get, I'll walk you right up to the door of the nine eleven museum." And so, like, we go over to the side. And I was like, is, "Is this sketchy? Like, is this like that's sketchy?" An off, like a police officer trying to see like if people are taking bribes. Like, am I get it? As soon as I do this, am I gonna go to jail? Like, what's going on here? I'm not sure you can go to jail. So for, I, well, I sit yeah. there and I evaluate the situation, and she's like, "Yeah, I really want to go." So I give him a hundred bucks for both of us. She walks us right up to the door, past the line for hours, and goes right. We go right into the nine eleven museum. And all the workers were waving. Like, they all, they're all in on it together. Whoa. And so, literally, what, 3,000 people died there. And now all of the workers, to make extra money on the side, are, you know, letting people come in. They do the same with thing. With bribes. <laughs> Fucking they, New York City, dude. They That's do the, a new level. The, they like, do the same thing You got VIP Egypt. tickets. Yeah. VIP. In Egypt, when you go into the tombs and all of that stuff, you're, right. there's no photography allowed, anything like that. And But the, you know, the security cards... Anytime you try to take a picture, they'll, you know, obviously, like, not let you. Yeah. <clears throat> but my cousin who went there said that they do the same thing. Like, if you pay them, like, 50 bucks, they'll let you take a picture of King Tut's, you know, toilet or whatever. <laughs> At the Coliseum when I went. King Toot. <laughs> God. <laughs> At the Coliseum, there's, it's really weird because you go up and, like, you know, it's the Coliseum. And um, there's all these guys in like centurion outfits and all this stuff, but it looks like Disney World or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. like t- t- take take a picture, and all these people like, and they'll charge you, I don't know how many euro, like fifty euro or something. I mean, it's a lot of money, and it was just crazy. I was like, I think we we take everything and just monetize it. Is what yeah. the, I guess did you go? That you went to the Coliseum? Oh uh, yeah. Was it weird? You're like, here's where thousands of Christians were slaughtered. It was crazy. Let's look at it. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> as, very much about genocide. Didn't yeah. it? <laughs> it was every bit of what I thought it would be. I mean, it was amazing. And I had, I didn't, I didn't have like GPS then. I had a razor phone, so I had to. I wandered around a lot. Like at one point, I was wandering around. I was like, why are these people here? And I was at the Vatican. I didn't even know. <laughs> It's like, oh, we're at the Vatican. And the there, Pope was, were... there was white smoke coming out. And like, yeah. Chris found out he was elected the new Pope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Surprise. That'd be an awful job. Jeez. Think job about, like, 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 the Pope has to ride around in a bulletproof, like, carriage. The new one doesn't. The Pope Mobile. The yeah, new one doesn't. The new one doesn't. The one before him did. And he's, the, the, the one before him, like, wore Gucci shoes and he kind of, he just, Left because the Pope was went to Yankee Stadium and it was like first time he ever came to America, Pope John Paul. And it was just like it's so bizarre, like it's such a weird, yeah. It was like it, you know, the stadium is packed like a hundred thousand people or more, and it's like they bring him out in a little Pope Mobile. Like, what do they think happens after he gets out of the Pope Mobile? No one's like they're only going to shoot him in transit, uh, like, you know, like he stands there and yeah. gives speeches and does all of his little. His popey stuff. Yeah, all of his pope, uh, popaganda, and <laughs> I, think, I think it's not. Pop, it's like the dumb and dumber thing. It's like, what if he shot me in the head? <laughs> it's like, 
What what if they <laughs> That's wait? That's a chance we were willing to take. <laughs> it's like I, I can only shoot a tr- a mobile pope. Well, you can't like really, John F. You Kennedy can't really or something. get in. <laughs> only shoot a mobile. <laughs> like you, you can't can only really, shoot him while he's moving. I don't you can't like really it. get a gun into Yankee Stadium, can you? I mean, they check you before you come in. Yeah, I'm sure they do, but I'm sure they check everyone everywhere the pope goes. I'm just curious. It's like the errant. I saw this thing. It was the pope during COVID and people were trying to kiss his hand. He just brings it back. And every time someone comes up to him, he brings his hand back because he doesn't want people to kiss him. If you him. really want him, if you really want to keep him safe, you don't need to have a Pope mobile. It's pretty obvious. It's the Pope. <laughs> it's like a big, clear vehicle, like surrounded in glass, with the yeah. Pope setting in it. Yeah. Like get like a, like a Honda Civic, <laughs> a 93 <laughs> Honda Civic. Like no one would ever expect the Pope to be riding it. Nobody's in a parade or something. <laughs> was it Trump that was trying to grab the Pope's hand and he kept, like kept smacking it away? Yeah. Did you see that video? Oh, that was his wife, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, no. But no, right. he did try to do something with it because, you know, Trump does that thing where he pulls you forward. He yeah. pulls you towards him and the Pope didn't do it or something. I wonder, what could the Pope and Donald Trump possibly have to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> I would pay a lot of money <laughs> to hear that conversation. <laughs> Me and the Pope's got to be rough. Especially the Pope prays five hours a day or something crazy. Like that. That's Imagine being wants. the guy who... I mean, do not have time how, to do anything else? I don't know how many yeah. millions of Catholics are there are, but I'm sure there's a lot. Like, imagine being, like, the the top guy. Like, people think if they touch you, like, their lives are going to be changed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there are people who really take the Pope seriously. Well, it's all Even, been... like, like, every, like, look at every mafia murder movie. Like, <laughs> you have these gangsters that are, like, savage killers and murderers. And, like, they'll stab a guy in the neck, you know, and, like, <laughs> murder a guy and his entire family. And walk out of their house, and there's a picture of the Pope hanging on the wall, and they're like, <laughs> cross, yeah, crossing a, their chest. It's a weird like, dichotomy there. I mean, the Pope comes from where, you know, Jesus said, Hey, you know, hey, and he said, Hey, Peter, who do you think I am? And he goes, Well, some say you're John the Baptist, and, you know, you know, and some say you're um, Elijah reincarnated and all that stuff. And he, and he goes, Well, Peter, who do you think I am? And he's like, you're the, you know, you're Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, blah, blah, you know. And he says, then Jesus says, "On this, I build my church." So that's why they, the Pope is a thing, is because they use that scripture to say, "Well, Peter was the first Pope, and now he, and all, all of them are a line of Peter." So that's where the where the Pope comes from. But really, you just said line of Peter. No. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just telling Jay, I, that book that I'm reading, Zealot. Um, I read a couple chapters today, and it was going in about historically. There's more information out about John the Baptist than there is about actually Jesus's life historically. There is. That's what. That's what. Well, like in Joseph- Bible scholar that wrote this, like in Josephus or stuff like that, and, or something. And he's he's claiming that basically. Jesus was a follower of John the Baptist, and uh-huh. that's how it started off. And then after John the Baptist was arrested, that's when he kind of took over his work and his followers, and okay. then, you know, went out even, even more of, even more outrageous than John the Baptist was. You know, going into the temple to destroy, you know, to destroy yeah. everything. And he he did. Ruckus. It did set him off. Like once and, he once he got baptized by John the Baptist. And then he said, it was on. And then they asked him, they said, uh, Jesus said, sell your garments and buy swords. And, and they said, we come back with two. And Jesus said, that's enough. Like they told him to go get swords. Yeah. And then I was reading in the Moody Bible commentary and it was like, this was an analogy for something. It was like, well, how do you know that? Like they were roaming around, but like just as nomadically. I mean, yeah. I guess not nomadically, but they were just kind of going from town to town. They yeah. needed protection, I guess, but it really wasn't Jesus's way most of the time. But yeah, I don't know. There's more stuff about John the perspe- Baptist. It was interesting perspective. This hmm. book that I'm reading. Yeah, I mean, he did go before him and kind of pave the way. That's, that's for sure. He did take up that mantle when he got baptized. By him. Yeah. I guess the cult that John the Baptist was, you know, raising was so attractive because he was offering salvation through baptism, right? And only once, whereas all the other, 
you know, people, it was like Messiah times. Everyone was saying they were the Messiah at the time. I mean, there was like, you know, 12 other people that said it. And, um, he was so attractive to, to, to the Jewish, to the Jewish community because he was offering the salvation. Through and that they reason. had their very oppressive right. Sadducees and Pharisees. Right. And, right. And but they thought the zealots then thought that, do you, that the, 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 the Messiah was going to come and be a, like a warrior. Right. Because, you know, you, you know, right. Maccabees and they've been oppressed all these years. Right. You know, they, right. they, they, but he, when he wasn't, that was kind of, yeah, it was like the messianic period. Yeah, was that time period? But they, but they were desperate and they were waiting for someone to come and save them from, you know, the Roman Empire. I mean, they were killed all the time. I mean, the, the Jews have been through some rough stuff. I mean, they've been in captivity for most of their existence. That that's so interesting to me too to see like, you know, they were the Jews have always been exceptionalists. Like they even like throughout in, the entire history, like they are think that they can fight take on the roman empire and end up winning for four years and then they come you know the roman empire ends up coming back and destroying the temple and you know the diaspora happens and they get uprooted out of the entire their entire land but like you know they never stopped like you know like this is our land we're gonna do whatever we have to keep it yeah like and then all these years later i don't know there's just a lot of a lot of weird stuff to it. Like Israel comes there's, back there's, again. There's a lot of con- they had a lot of conflict even from the beginning. Yeah, I mean we're boring Jason, so we can move to something else. <laughs> he's, he's looking something he's up. Looking, something he's looking something up. Um, there should be no phones in here unless we're looking something up. But um, I mean, I'm well, just, he does have four kids in his. Debate. Yeah, it is true. He's allowed to check his phone, make sure they have all their arms and legs. Yeah, it's all about the line of Peter. <laughs> We need t-shirts immediately. <laughs> that's that's our, the line of Peter. <laughs> so we've now talked about the Jewish people and the Catholics. Who else can... We haven't said anything bad. No, it's all been really. positive. I will say something bad about the Catholics <laughs> if we're going there. Um, okay. In in Israel, they've like... They take over literally everything and put Catholic, churches on top the, of it. Yes, they do. The Catholics Like do, yeah. every historical site, they build a church over it. Like literally where Jesus... Healed, um, Jesus healed. What's his? They they brought. They, what's his name? They brought him down through the roof, and Jesus healed him. He was lame. Yeah. And the, literally, there was a Catholic church built over top of that holy site. Over top of now, is this whole, really the site? Or is a, think there's a the current site? church. There's where that actually happened. Where Jesus raised down. Or where Jesus healed the lame man, where they raised him down through the roof. And then there's an old church, like from 32 AD, built over that as a monument. Mm-hmm. And then there's a modern day church built. So you have a church built over a church over a church. And then you have the Byzantine, the Byzantine era, era <laughs> yeah, came yeah. in, and you had the Muslims right. built on top of that. Right. Yeah. And then then, yeah. then, the, then the Muslims lost, and then the Jews so, built over that. I mean, the, they just built over top of each other. In the room of the, the Last Supper, at one time, it was a mosque. And so there's. There's Arabic writing all around. How do they know around. that was the room of the last? It's just supper. tradition. Basically, okay. okay, so Helena, Helena, uh, Cur, uh, who was it? Cornelius's mom. Okay. Um, went. It was like 380 or 580 after he 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 Cornelius made the official religion of Rome Christian. Right. And. So Helen, Helena, his mom, went into the Holy Land, like to the Church of the Nativity, and started saying, and started paying people locals to be like, "Where is the tradition that this was?" Uh, so that's the best. That's okay. the best account that we have of the, the whether or not it Helena is Helena okay. going in and doing the research and but talking it's like, to the locals. But it's on still five hundred years afterwards. I mean, you know, it's like yeah, but it's more better than two thousand years afterwards. So it's just oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's, that's so true. You just gotta. Sometimes you just you don't know for sure. But they said that there's so many fragments of what of the cross that people have been sold that it would build it would like it would build like a I don't know twenty thousand foot cross that people have. <laughs> like there's so many yeah. people that think they have a piece of the Justin cross. Justin has a piece of the cross. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has that yeah. too. He has that yeah. next to which is ne- very next w- weird. Bricks. It's very weird that he has that. <laughs> I will say, without the Catholic Empire... He also has a piece of porcelain from Elvis' toilet. 
gold seatbelt. You have like a office. small museum in your room with <laughs> yeah. these, these backlit. In my mom's glasses. bedroom. <laughs> my mom's extra spare room. I have a museum. Uh, uh, Hitler's phone. That's where we got to go get Hitler's phone. <laughs> yeah. Get just that'll just complete the collection. <laughs> like if we could do an Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven type <laughs> or what if to you, get What if we it. contact the Highlands Museum? And offer a straight up trade of your Holocaust brick <laughs> for Hitler's phone, just kind of to balance out nature. They, somebody brought in a piece of the Berlin Wall to Pawn Stars one time, and he was like, "Yeah, there's literally like millions of these. Like, this isn't worth anything." And he was like, "Oh, okay." Of the, of the Auschwitz? No, the Berlin Wall. Oh yeah, it was pretty big. Yeah, I think that's what it represents. I mean, I don't know. But going back to the Catholic Church, if without the Catholic Church. We wouldn't have civilization, to be straight up. I mean, we mean? wouldn't we wouldn't have order. Yeah. Like they brought order to 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 Europe. I mean, yeah, they did a lot of bad things. They had the Crusades. That was <laughs> that, that little was, thing. That was awful. <laughs> but personally, personally, not being able to eat meat on Fridays, <laughs> yeah, kind of sounds like the worst thing. That they yeah, did. that was mean. They did that. Well, you can, you can eat fish if you want. I mean, can't have fish. You can. That's meat. But then the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, they. They put all their little trinkets and stuff in there. And you just you go into supposedly where Jesus was crucified and buried, and you're like, this takes away the entire experience. Because it's so big. Yeah, and then yeah. the Protestants are like, we hate this. We're going to create the garden tomb. This is where we think it was based on bad science. And right. So you can get a better ex- experience. And they saw a tour to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the Catholics did bring order to, to, to Europe and to the, I mean... We people had to feel bad about something not to murder people. There had to be some kind of rules or something. You know what I mean? There, otherwise, it would have been just, just. We still would have been in the dark ages. I mean, I, I just. How else would we gotten to a place where there is structure? Uh, I mean, otherwise, I mean, yeah, there was the Crusades and all the and all the and there was uh, Manifest Destiny and all that stuff. But with 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 that, we got structure in the world i mean there's just yeah. i don't know how else we would have done it but anyway i don't know where that's not it's not it's not a really fun thing to talk about but i think it's just interesting how something so bad did something good in, in, in a way i mean i don't know i mean without war we wouldn't have technology that we have we yeah. wouldn't have the internet without war we wouldn't have um airplanes airplanes and iPhones, and Gore-Tex, and probably you know like the cars we have, and I mean it was all out of necessity. The war economy, yeah, the war economy created all this stuff. So it's it's kind of interesting how the really bad stuff does create some. I mean, some good stuff, I guess. But yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pro-war. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, like or Dick manifest Cheney over John here, Bolton, <laughs> John Bolton podcast, <laughs> or or manifest <laughs> destiny. But I'm just saying, there was some good stuff that came out of it. I mean, like we wouldn't have duct tape if it wasn't for war. So what, what I'm hearing from you, Chris, is <laughs> you would kill all of the Jews all over again <laughs> if it meant you could have an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I wonder if the iPhone would have been invented. I don't know. I don't think that the, the two are cor- correlated at all. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it's not a pie, Chris. It's not, it's not like we we can't we can't have iPhones only because the Jews exist. <laughs> like, gosh. Uh, I think didn't what's the main guy that it's the guy that's uh, Steve Jobs' right hand guy that did all the technology. Steve with? Womack. Is he Jewish? Wozniak. Steve Wozniak. Wozniak. That's, that's not Jewish. It's like Polish or something. Polish, right? I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, he guy. sucks. Dude, he he's a badass. What are you talking about? Well, Apple products have steadily sucked. Well, he's retired. Yeah, you know, he's retired. Apple products have, have gone a, down the tubes. I mean, I've sure. only oh, I've only bought Mac and Apple products since I was, you know, since they came out, and. I've, I've been my very disappointed. My iPhone 3G was more dependable than my <laughs> new iPhone 11. Yeah, the new well, MacBooks. That's, that's more the, the the network you're on. Yeah. Not the the technology of it. I mean, that what happened was is that their des, their design went down and they had to 
when Steve Jobs left. Like Steve Jobs had standards, and they're now it's just a all the standards went out the window. Yeah, he was just so he he liked to keep keep things very simple and practical because it's how he was. I mean, the guy wore a black shirt every day. Yeah, if that tells you anything about his, you know, management style. He was kind of a tyrant too. I mean, yeah, but anybody who does something great like that, I mean, almost has to be. Like if you fight for your vision more than I, I think he, he learned in the end that he probably you know he regretted it. But you're you're, you're not going to get anywhere. I think appealing to everybody. I think that's the mis- the biggest that's, mistake. Yeah, like that's everyone true. thinks now, our generation, my generation makes yeah. not not your all's generation. But. Wow, that was that was a low key like old old joke. <laughs> <laughs> you all are old as hell. <laughs> I mean. I don't even know where we're going with that. Say the truth. Yeah, uh, I'm personally <laughs> offended now that uh, we wouldn't have these podcast mics unless it's true. The calls. Yeah, I mean, we're running on a Mac right now. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank God for the the Inquisition. <laughs> so we can say here with the, <laughs> these fancy microphones. Because of the pogroms, I can <laughs> own a MacBook. <laughs> I mean, this is a 2012 MacBook. Hiroshima and Nagasaki <laughs> paved way for the electric car. <laughs> they did pay way for Honda and Toyota. <laughs> that it is true because they couldn't sign. They couldn't make airplanes. Japan couldn't make airplanes, so all the all the rocket scientists went to work for Honda and Toyota, and that's why they're so dependable. Huh? Well, look at so that. Really, the theme of this entire thing so far has been <laughs> out of genocide and mass death comes a greater victory for humanity. I think that's, that's like, well, it's a positive turn. Yeah, we you know. You, you can something we can turn something bad into great, you know. I mean, if I kill myself, the world will be a better place. And that's that's <laughs> this is more on a macro level than a micro yeah. level. <laughs> it's a butterfly effect, man. <laughs> yeah. That that movie was off the chain weird. Like, I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> Justin kills himself, and all of a sudden, like, we turn into like Pod- Vietnamese Pod- people. Podcast goes viral. <laughs> that's what it takes, man. <laughs> But he'll like in the movie he like he'll do stuff and it'll ch- always change his future for bad like every time. That's what yeah. happens in the movie. So it's it's not a time travel movie. It's a alternate it's a reality. Content, it's continent, Life's continuity balance. of yeah. of events. Of event. maybe. Yeah. yeah, a take on like the yin and yang effect. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's Ashton Kutcher, <laughs> the great Ashton Kutcher. They made two more of those butterfly effect movies, though. Ashton Kutcher is like the number one leader of helping sex traffic for traffic victims now. Yeah, like, which I think is great. Yeah. Did you see? Oh. <laughs> which is which is what we would expect you to say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God, but given your last ten minutes of praising awful, you know, events. Such a chode. The I would just watch the new WeWork documentary. Are you familiar with WeWork? We work. They. It was like the biggest. Um, it's on Hulu. It's, it, it was the biggest uh, property company in new, like in the world at one time. It was evaluated at like twenty million dollars. Basically, it's a collective office. Like the whole idea of the collective. Everything in there is glass. There's a common area. Like there's a beer tap. There's Starbucks coffee. Like people go into this building and get cheaper rent and they all live very closely together. They have little tiny offices. They're all clear. They're able to work together. And they live there. Too. It was a, it was a guy, he was a Jewish guy that came from a kibbutz mm-hmm. and a guy from out on the West coast that came from a commune and they got together and created WeWork, which is they would just lease office buildings, remodel them really nice. And then you rent them out to people like startup companies basically. Right. And, at one time they were they ended up going bankrupt because they were just super inflated. It was like the the sharing economy for office space. Like the the Uber oh. the Uber or Lyft of office oh, okay, space. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 I get it now. And they ended up going, you know, taking a deep dive and Ashton Kutcher was going around telling invest like as a spokesperson for this guy, like, Oh, keep investing in WeWork, they're, you know, doing great things. Like he was used as a tool by the founder oh. of WeWork to get people like me and you to like keep our money in it when all of the all of the financial statements clearly showed that they were glamour stock. They were right. over overvaluated. Well they were trying to go public. They never actually got an IP, but they uh huh. yeah. 
Well, that means you can but see why it wouldn't work. You can use any celebrity like Ashton Kutcher as a tool to convince people like so us. So they changed to, it to didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that was stupid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> didn't work. We don't work. <laughs> <laughs> we fail. I mean, that yeah. just, I don't know, that doesn't seem. I think Office Space will go out the window, period, after this. I don't think Office Space will exist. Yeah. It already doesn't. And I mean, in a lot of, a lot of realms, it really kind of don't. Like, look right. at. I mean, Ashland's a bad example because this whole town sucks. But like, look how many, look at downtown. Like, every building is empty. You know, like, yeah. no one wants to, no one wants to, we have, you know, all of these vacant lots and all of this stuff. But like there were prime like, real estate. They're right downtown Ashland, yeah. across from the, the, most, the, the, the most prime piece of real estate oldest, in town. The oldest and most prestigious theater in the state, Paramount, across the street from it is burger king and across and the street from that they're building a sonic. they're building a sonic and then there's fast food and that's like an analogy to this entire area and it's like yeah like and a, there's the, Adam the, and, the yeah. most prime piece of real estate in yeah. the city sonic is building a new building same thing in new boston ohio like the most one of the most prime pieces of property there they're building a taco bell right like, yeah, and then you know, you all these old, like old, or what do we like, want them to be? A historic, museum for something? But or like, what do you know, these are like old, cool, like hip, historic, like Art Deco buildings downtown that have been yeah. like stupid. You know, dude. you look at if people you look are at, ruining the city. You look at scenes from the like the 1940s of downtown Ashland, mm -hmm. and it looks like a smaller version of New York City. Like you had all these businesses and shops, and like all the you know cars down the road, and just people everywhere. It's like now downtown, there's just nothing. Yeah, there used to be a lot more industry here, though. That's you true. Know? I mean, to support it, I mean, Ironton was filled with factories, and and you know, and and Ashland had a lot more businesses, and we had Ashland Oil, and we had, you know, we had a lot more just jobs. So, to, you, I mean, there's just so much more money, and there's just not, it's not there now. So no, I don't, I don't feel like any leaders in this area are willing to be open minded about okay, what do we actually need to do to help bring back the area, like whether it's tech investment. Or like something for the 21st century. Like now, it's just like we're wait. The manufacturing jobs will come back after Trump. It's like no, they're not. They're dead. Yeah. Move, like move on. Yeah. Like what are you going to do now? I think if we had That's what the rest of the world is doing a terrible tragedy, like half the town gets like wiped out by a tsunami or something. Why would and Chris I, is and I would Chris and Chris's theory? Tsunami makes it. That's going to turn. That, that's going to turn everything <laughs> around. <laughs> it's a, we need a cleansing. That was kind of Hitler's thing, wasn't it? Just cleansing and that was that was oh, Than God. that was Thanos's too. Just wipe everybody out. There won't be as many as many people, and then everything will be fine. I think it's ad the attitude in this um, in this area is just it's it is of, of poverty Defeatism. and of and, and then yes. there's a learned there's a learned helplessness, helplessness that is just it's hard to. There was like a cl dark, rainy cloud over this entire area when it comes to just people's attitude yeah. and expectation about everything. Mm -hmm. And that's just Appalachia. And, and part of it is, part of it is self fulfilling prophecy. But, but part of it is, you know, eventually, when good things never happen to us, you know, we're gonna just stay in that mindset. Good things never happen to us, yeah. and then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Actually, you know what? It's not Appalachia. It's just this area because I've been to other parts of Appalachia, and it's great. Like people are nice; they have a nice, good attitude. Like yeah. it's something about Ashland and Portsmouth. Ohio. I mean, there's worse areas in here. I mean, you think about. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm talking. I mean, there's there's Hazard, Kentucky. You know what I mean? There's yeah. there's there's places that are less developed. I mean, are we? I mean, what are we equating great to? Developed. Are we drop opportunities? Are we? I mean, there is there. I mean, you have a small pocket of middle class people that's in like Boyd County. Then you've got Grant County. It gets that's in the and you go Lawrence County and Carter County. There's a lot less. You know, there should be people I think that have money. The measure should just be enough job, like livable wage incomes, not. Sonics and Taco Bells and fast, like the service economy that we're living in yeah. here. We don't even have enough like restaurants the, to really say. What's the biggest employer? What's the two biggest employers in this area? King's Daughters, King's and, Daughters Texas Roadhouse. and Texas Roadhouse and so. SOMC in Portsmouth. Right. Your biggest employer is a hospital. That's yeah. Not and we're the health. We're the most unhealthy, re, you know, yeah. area in America. So it's they're feeding off of us and being health, unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's not even like top notch care. It's not like. 
they have the latest technology or anything. Mm-hmm. It's not like mm-hmm. I mean, you really can't like if you have an injury, good luck. Yeah. If you have something wrong with you, it's it, just good luck with that. They'll, they'll send you somewhere else. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you're always we, going to Lexington. Or we don't even have Super trauma Bowl. units here. Yeah, we don't. It's 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 strange that it's and it's strange and strange that they weren't equipped for the low population we had. They weren't equipped for something like COVID at all. Mm-hmm. They weren't. They had to take shut all the other things, all the other departments down to even to even you know so people can get the, can get their knees resurfaced and or, or whatever you know. It's not. It's interesting that, that, but it's also not as bad as other places. I mean. It's not, the crime rate is not that well, it bad. It could always be worse. Yeah. Yeah, the crime rate's not that bad. No. People yeah. are always people always think this area is unsafe, and I I think they've never really been anywhere else. No, this area is not it's very it's not, safe. It's very safe. I mean, compared to Washington D.C. or New York or um, like Auschwitz, might, you can walk. <laughs> Auschwitz. You you, might, you could walk somewhere in downtown Portsmouth and think like, "Don't get out of the car. It looks so sketchy." Like, yeah, it looks like that, but your odds of getting murdered are about zero. It's just like, unkept. <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah, it's not dangerous. Like, yeah, it just yeah. looks like it is, but it's not. <laughs> like I remember, I remember when the mall was a train yard. Like really? I, I remember that. Yeah, and there was no, there was no. Um, viaduct it was just like this really sketch road that went from flatwoods to ashland and it there was a huge rock that fell and it said warning you know falling rocks and it was a huge boulder i mean it was scary to go down to ashland it was crazy like when i was younger hmm. that, that tells you how old i was but but anyway <laughs> i don't know yeah but no no one the point being, no one seems to have a business, like no leader seems to have a business plan. And part part of it is the good old boys club of these people that are from this area their entire life. They get elected. They've never been anywhere else but Myrtle Beach every summer. And you have running the local government. What the what the hell do they know about running a gov- running the government? I'm not saying I'm more qualified or anything, but like you should be able to like hire and elect leaders who are experienced and... Are open to new ideas. It might be divided goals, like divided, um, like priorities. You know, what do we really want? And it's easy know? for me to sit here and critic, you know, criticize. Them, yeah. But, I mean. Yeah, I mean it's, it's hard to, I mean the the fact that, Belfont Hospital is going to turn into. Arc is buying that supposedly, mm-hmm. and yeah. Arc it's a drug rehab place. Oh. Oh God! So they're going to turn that whole place. So we're going to be like the mecca for drug addicts. Yeah. That's what that's what Portsmouth is already. All the every single house, every other block, there's a drug rehab center. Which, if you look at our area, we need something to treat that problem, even to get out of the mindset for people to even because if people are on drugs, they're not getting a job, yeah. right? If they can't, if you can't figure that problem out, well, that's part of the problem. Is you shouldn't jobs shouldn't be drug testing. I don't believe. I, I don't. I, and well, that's I don't, an insurance thing. You're never going to stop. Yeah, you're never going to stop insurance companies from making businesses do that. Is and it, an insurance premium would be too yeah. high. Well, we have to get over that, and we and be able to hire people with criminal records too. Because right. if someone's paid their time, they paid their time, man. Like, why can't they own a firearm? Why can't they, you know, vote? Or why can't you know? I like, understand the firearm. We need thing, to be. We need of, to be better at forgiving. <laughs> forgiving people because they're more likely to go back into the system when they Mm -hmm. can't get out of it. Like when your only job you can get is at golden corral after you get out of prison, like, yeah, you're going to, I mean, you're right back. You're better off living in prison than you would be living miserably working at golden corral. I think there's a, there's a, there's a way to blame society for people being stuck in destitution, but there's also, there's a lot of people just don't want to work for stuff. And that's just human nature, you know, yeah. like they, they don't want to, they want something fast. They don't want to go, you know, get it, you know, get a training or a degree or whatever the heck. They don't want that. They don't want to take the time to, to, to do that. And that's. Why do you think that is? Because it's hard. I mean, it's hard to be, it's hard to, like, to, to make a decision what you're going to do. Then you're committed to it. And then you, and then you have to pay for it. Like, like I have a master's degree, but I owe, you know, $90,000. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's a whole other subject, but. Do you feel like we have like this sense of entitlement everybody has? Like, <laughs> um, I don't think that I do. And like, I don't think people that are my age do. Yeah. Do you think people my age do? <laughs> I think generally people your age do uh, and younger do, but. I think it's that might they may might just be learning a lesson later in life mm-hmm. to that things are harder than I thought. Like right. I grew up relatively wealthy, and there was a point where I, I so I had to. I, there was a point where I had to say, "Oh, I am on my own now. I have to get this degree. I have to get a job. I have to." I remember when I got my preaching job? I had to write my first sermon, and I'd written a lot of sermons and stuff. But then I thought, "Oh, no one's going to run this." show but me and it, i had just had this moment i was like i gotta get my act to get i mean it was just a, the responsibility of it just and i was I, and i just started stepping up yeah. um and i was it made me proud to to do that but i mean i'm not saying my life's been super hard or anything but i had to learn to like i had a point where i lost my preaching job and i had i had was pawning guitars and i was just trying to survive i had no job so i had to do something so i had to i went back to school i was like i guess I'll just go back to school and i'll do this case manager job and you know that kind of thing i don't know doesn't it seem like in this area churches are one of the biggest in- industries oh yeah people, like a lot of people i went to high school with like they're now pastors getting paid by the church like they really didn't have any other job or or like all the all the old buildings are being bought by churches and being turned into churches the golden corral in portsmouth was bought by a church like yeah it, I mean, like, I mean, now it's, it's an apostolic church like yeah it's being it, it, you know, you can't, it's interesting that it's become a business. Like you were talking about last time when we were talking with Sean here, that, that people don't learn in churches like the spiritual basis of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason that of the, for that is, is because churches are a business. They're, they're, how do we, you know, like, and once they get a building, that building's the priority. Right. We got to keep this building, we have our services. They want it to look like a certain thing and it doesn't, a church service takes away from the actual church service to the people like that's what happens they're doing little good like putting so much money into a building like right. that's not feeding anyone that's not giving anything to mission that's not i'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a church building no but a lot of times they spend so much money on crap like that's why i wouldn't tie that at church like i feel like it's just being wasted yeah like what could we have done with this money yeah your your fog machine could have like probably yeah. paid someone's electric bill yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah, like the laser light show could have helped grandma with you know feed her for a few yeah. weeks. And there are churches in the area that feed the poor. Yeah. And there are churches that that and they still have the light show. Like they're Right. That's fine. I'm they not are. saying there's anything wrong like with If the you're light not doing but it's what it is is that if you're not doing that, you're kind of missing the point of the thing. And right. but whatever, people go through you know, and I'm you know, they have to learn that. There's nothing we can do about that. But that's what happens is it should become a, like I know when we were in, with Hillside Church, we had no building forever, and all we did is serve, serve, serve people. And then all of a sudden we got a building, and it became about the building. It was very weird. It like I saw it happen. I was like, oh, yeah. this is all about this building. And this we have the best musicians. We have the best, mm-hmm. you know, blah blah blah. blah. And it got mm-hmm. to be about a show on Sunday morning. Yeah. Wow. Now there is something about church that's like community wise. That's good to have a community of people. I mean, how else are you gonna? You have people you work with, right? And a lot of people like don't have friends, you know, like their church friends, are their friends, you know. So that's 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 important. That kind of community, I think, mm-hmm. is important. But I don't know. It's church a, is a service in a way. Yeah, it's a it is a it service. Improves people's lives. It does to have people that you have con- a common, you know, bond with, and I think church has changed to like I think there's more less there's more uh, non legalistic churches than there are. Legalistic churches now; those are dying away. I think. Think so. I think so. I mean, you see so many churches that, um, that they don't they don't have those res- those legalistic restrictions on. Right. Yeah, you know, and there's still though there's still you know those churches, but I don't think you can do that. I mean, heck, a lot of churches like the Methodist Church. You know, you can be a woman, you can be a lesbian, you can be you know they accept yeah, yeah. everybody. You know, which yeah. I mean. I think that's fine. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's not about judging people. I think that's a good turn to the, mm-hmm. to the, and I mean, whatever you you think about that, you know, what, I mean, whatever, it's just, it's not for me to judge anyway, but, um, I don't know. That's the, my spiel on church, I guess for the, um, 
Yeah, you know, we could probably go off on that forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was hoping for like a line of Peter type joke. Yeah. I was hoping. Where's for... the jokes? I don't know. I'm like I'm just trying to figure out where to go from here. Like our transitions have been so we've been very, we've been very serious today. Seamless. Yeah. Yeah. We've been very serious. We we're talking about the Civil War now. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> so that Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That John Gettysburg was full of shit. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good story. My my sister went to a Christian school and they went on a ghost tour. They brought them up in the attic and turned off the lights and trying to find ghosts. And Were they looking for the whole? Everyone ghost? in the all the church leaders got offended. <laughs> We're like, what? What in the world? I can't believe this happened. And like, you went on a ghost tour. Like, what? What did you expect? Like, yeah. They got all upset about it. The church members got mad about the yeah. ghost tour. It was like, why did you pay for the ghost tour then? Like and then you're surprised when they're talking about ghosts. Yeah, that that doesn't make sense at all. I mean, I got in a lot of trouble at church for that kind of stuff. I mean, just always, you know, I got I got in trouble with my uh, my with the church that was a past youth pastor of for wearing um, skinny car- jeans. No, I couldn't. I can't, can't fit in skinny jeans, but. And uh, I was wearing camo assless shorts, chaps. camo. Sh- yeah, I was wearing assless chaps. I, got in trouble. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I was just preaching in assless. I didn't turn around at any point. So it was- Legalism, man. <laughs> but I was wearing camo shorts oh. one time. And I, I feel like John the Baptist would have wore assless chaps. Yeah, I think he would have just for the air conditioning. They couldn't you know? see your. They couldn't see your legs. That's why they got mad. Yeah, that's, what, that's what it was. They're they like, "Where's your, your your midsection? Where's the rest of your body?" Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> so what did they like who the pastor was like chris no, this need church... you to stop you stop wearing cargo yes shorts. and the church lady came up to me and in the parking lot and she said i was wearing camo shorts she like, smoked while she's smoking a cigarette no and she said <laughs> she said your your grass isn't mowed short enough and you leave your screen because i live next to the, the church in a parsonage and she said that left my screen door open too much and i was like how in the world does that affect her life I I I I was in the parking lot with her, and I was like, I was like, I know you pay the tithes here, but you're not going to tell me what I'm going to wear, how when I'm going to mow my grass, and whether or not I have my screened it screened. Yeah, I did. I said I said I visited your husband in the hospital in Lexington. Like I went to Lexington to visit her husband in the hospital. You know, because what pastors do, they go to the hospital right. and visit people. You'd be like, sorry, I wasn't mowing my grass while I was <laughs> praying for your dying husband. Yeah, I know. You, you, it was geez, it, it was all That's the time. Crazy. It was something. I got in trouble for playing U2 at youth group one time. And that was... <laughs> that was yeah, well, to be fair, it was U2's cover of WAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. One time I, one time I was at church and uh, the... There's a younger guy playing piano, and he played the Final Fantasy soundtrack. I forget which one, maybe seven. And uh, all the old people didn't know what it was, and they like really felt the spirit, man. And, it was, <laughs> and we were just we were just talking about like you know, it, does it really matter what it is that brings you closer to God? Like if it's the Final Fantasy soundtrack, like then it's then yeah. that's what it is, you know. I think the fact that there's Christian music, and then there's non-christian music is like it's a total stupid thing like it just totally doesn't make sense to, that but they there is a i guess a i mean praise and worship music didn't exist till martin luther came along he's he, he wrote the first praise and worship tunes but they were just alpha old bar tunes mm-hmm. old you know so yeah. it's it's but people want to know that they're they're in such a strict regimen of i want to make sure i'm holy that they're like, oh gosh, well that's that Pearl James song. So what's the what's to... the one? Um da 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 That's a that's like an old battle hymn, and then they turn it into a movies, church song. Movie stars has oh, no. movies. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's an act that was a hymn and an old uh-huh. battle uh battle song. Yeah, so that's like it, it just... does it doesn't make sense that they like there's a Christian music section. You won't hear any cuss words here. You won't, you know. Yeah. yeah. My dad used to buy, it was called Angel DVD or something, and they took out all the cuss yes, words out of that the, still exists. Does it? Does it? It's straight, you can stream stuff now. Oh, wow. Yep. 
And it takes all the cuss words. It's called vid. Songs. It's called vid angel. Vid angel. Yeah, that's uh-huh. it. So it's no cuss words in the video. Yeah, they, it was like Netflix take, for Christians. Yeah, they like they take DVDs nudity, the you know, swearing, all of that stuff out. They crop it out really well. Really, yeah. I would like to see the Sopranos. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's I, some like, stuff that just takes so five it's minutes like, long. Yeah, it's like three and a half minutes long. Meanwhile, in the Bible, there's like more murder than yeah. like, there's <laughs> in any rape other and, book and rape in the movie. There is any other book. That's crazy. Why do we always go to the Bible? We're just a bunch of. Uh, I, I think it's instilled in us because we were all raised in church our entire life, and so yeah, naturally it's just a part it's, of who we yeah. are, and we live with all of this guilt. Train them up the been, way they should go, and they'll never been, depart from it, Chris. Yeah, I mean it is. There's so much symbolism and so much. It is some deep stuff. I mean, it's not just as simple as you know, give your life to Jesus and go to heaven. You know, it's not. It's way more than that. It's like it's got so many shades to it that it's 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 interesting to me i mean it's it's definitely a a it's not like a handbook for life it's like do this do this do that it's not there's only two religions where that is the case where you accept someone's name and then you're saved it's christianity and buddhism if you accept the buddha as you know here's your Messiah, you'll go yeah. to a paradise. Right. I mean, Christianity, it, that's the only two that make it that simple. Everything else is based on a lot of other things. I, I had an awful thought lately. I was talking to my um, sponsor and he was talking about heaven and hell and all the levels and, and what happens after the thousand years and all that jazz. And I was thinking, as he was showing me, he has, he has a diagram of it. And I'm like, do I ever get to rest? Like I was thinking, am I gonna live forever? Like I was just, it was awful that I thought that it was so existential for me. I was like, do I ever get just to get to just, just rest and my mind doesn't have to, get, you know? It was such a yeah. weird thing to think, and I felt bad about thinking it, but I, I, I was like, can I just? I mean, I, then I thought maybe I'm just supposed to be at peace now. I don't know. Like you know what I mean? Like it was very, and then you know you go to this level, and then God comes back, and I mean it was just the new heaven and new earth come, and it's just. Right. Can ever just not have consciousness? I don't. know. It sounds probably an attic thing to say, but you know, like, can I just can I just chill out and have peace? I don't know. Maybe that's just what I'm supposed to do now. It's like, yeah, accept the moment and be in it. What layer of hill are we in right now? Yeah. <laughs> we're definitely according in, to the diagram. Uh, we're definitely. Well, he talks about the there's the dark realm. I mean, he, gosh, I can't even go into it. It is levels of. He said this one thing. He said. I think I said this to you the other day. Or if if in Job it talk, says if if God stopped breathing, that we'd all die because He's our breath. You know the breath in our lungs. And I was like, "Jeez, dude, that's, keep breathing, God. Keep <laughs> you know, we can just keep going." It freaked me out. Good thing yeah. George Floyd isn't God. 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 Okay, that, that was, was a... just that was awful. wow. <laughs> you had to go. <laughs> had to go there. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> if Sean was here, he would talk about the whole George Floyd case. He's got he's got the rundown on. Oh him. yeah, he he was watching the documentary. So or not documentary, the live thing. So what would be your your personal hell? I think I'm pretty much in. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm about there, buddy. Okay, but something. You had to do over and over again for the rest of eternity. My job, day of my, like we just <laughs> talked about this. I do, like my job is so monotonous. It is, it has become my personal hell. Okay, but really go for it. What would be really, other than your current reality, what would be burning an internal hell? What flame? movie would be on repeat that you'd have to watch? Oh God! Somebody, somebody like scratching their nails on a chalkboard. So, kind of in that same realm, I, you've probably heard this story before. Um, so, I bought a car. I was 18 or 19. I bought a Ford Focus. And me and my girlfriend went to, was going to Florida. Mm-hmm. And my car breaks down in Atlanta. Like, right, like, I hadn't even made the first Is payment Is that a on gold it. car? Yes. I know okay. this story, and I don't know how that's <laughs> personal hell. Well, no, no, I'm getting there. Okay. So, so you had you had, you had like a gold so to me. you had a gold Ford Focus. Wait. So I break down right in the middle of downtown Atlanta. Right. Yeah. My mom happened to be coming from Kentucky to Florida, like later that 
you know, like the next day or something. Cause we were going down there to actually stay at her house. And so she, she got, she caught up with us a few hours later and I had my, t- uh, it was July 4th too, by the way. Um, so I had, no one could get my car in cause it was a holiday. So we had to stay the night in Atlanta and I had my car towed and I was like, Hey, you know, let's make the best of the situation. Let's go to a Braves game, you know, July 4th Braves game. That sounds like fun, right? Yeah. So we go to the Braves game. It storms something hellacious. Okay. Like one of the most insane thunderstorms I've ever seen. And the game got canceled. So we're outside of the Atlanta Braves stadium. And, um, I was, you know, had to have my mom come and get us because I didn't have a car. So it's all obviously kind of sketch around there and outside on the speakers in the parking lot and around the stadium, they're playing. It's like the Atlanta Braves would like to thank you for attending today's game. Like we hope to see you soon on repeat. And the song that was playing was Green Day time of your life like it's something <laughs> unpredictable but at the end that's right hope you had the time of your life the atlanta braves would like to thank you for attending today's game please join us again it's something unpredictable and dude it played on repeat and we were outside like sitting there for at least an hour or like or, or more and it just played on the repeat. same song and over and over the again? same it was like a five six second long clip and they just kept playing it on repeat. And I was like, I want to die. And every time I hear that song, I get upset. Because <laughs> like, you think of that time. Oh, I think of that moment. And it was that. So that's kind of funny. Like we talked about the personal hill, like what movie would be playing. Yeah. That song would be playing. Yeah. I've lived that. Yeah, that song is. When I worked at Journeys. We had these videos we had to put on the screen. And it was all these like punk rock videos and pop punk and stuff and the the video ran about maybe two hours but so on a eight hour shift you're watching that video and it was every month was a new one so for the whole month by the end of the month you just wanted to shoot yourself it was just like some 41 and just all the Skateboard rock. Skateboard rock over over and over again. Eventually, I just t- put the video on and put other music on. But it was just... But if a, if a district manager or something came in and we didn't have it on, oh, we'd be in... Because they're trying to sell socks and shoes and whatever, you know. I don't know. That music just gets people in the mood to buy shoes from Germany. I'm so punk rock, man. I get a pair of Vans. And oh. I remember when f- flames on shoes were a big thing? That was, that was big. I had the Vans with the flames on them. Hmm. Definitely had those. Like the high top ones? No, they were low cut. Ooh, yeah. Those were awesome. Dude, I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to see if I can find their shoes now. You're going like, to wear those now? Yeah. I don't know. I'm 33. Really? What do I have to lose? <laughs> <laughs> wear camo shorts and flam veins. Yeah. Bands. Flam veins. Flam veins. Flam- <laughs> that's our new band name. Flam, flam-, flam-, flam- veins. What did I say? Flam veins. Flam veins. <laughs> that's a cool name. Flam, flam- veins. That would actually work. Flamed yeah. vans. Flamed van. I'm not into flamed vans. Or flames in general. I don't know. <laughs> On anything. I don't it's think. like the flame button up shirt that every like. The, the bowling seventh, shirt. Guy Fieri. Yeah. The yeah. Guy, Guy Fieri, Fieri shirt. shirt that yeah. every like seventh grade kid with spiked hair. Owns. Yeah. It's very 90s. Very nineties. I saw those at Goodwill. There was like five of them. It's like, <laughs> should I buy one of these? Yes, you should have bought all of them. <laughs> you mean we could be wearing flame shirts right now? <laughs> all of us. Together? You've had this extra pair of gloves this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would your uh, the, what would the movie you would have to watch that be? Mm. In your in hell, I think it would just be every Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh <laughs> God, you're right. That's true. How about you, Justin? Which movie? I, I have no idea. No. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. That's a great movie. Fuck you. That's a great movie. No. That's that is fantastic. the dumbest movie. I cry at the end of in it. The it's a great movie. Of cinema. You're crazy, dude. An history of cinema? This yes. This is the most confrontational opinion on this podcast. You're yes. telling me the Benjamin Button. Yes. Fantastic. Starring Brad Pitt and not Callista Flockhart. Classic. Who is the other person? It was written by the guy that made Forrest Gump, man. 
I don't care if it was written by it's the actually, Apostle Paul. It was actually it's the dumbest movie. It was, in this it was actually time. really a short. Line. It was a short story that was only ten pages long at first, and then they made. Well, it they should have kept script. it that way. <laughs> Okay, so Benjamin Button is the worst movie. Okay, so that would be... And Green Day. It, it's a long movie. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's... it's However however long it is, it's that many minutes too long. <laughs> How about you, Justin? I don't know, man. I can't... The I'm worst to think a like movie a that would you would have to watch over and over again. I don't know. I just... I'm trying I'd to think probably go with anything Hallmark. I agree with that. Yeah, an infinite Hallmark... Christmas movie would be God, they're so bad. People just like comfort, I guess. They they know the ending, they know how it It's the same story. A woman who's given up on men. Yes. HGTV. She I had to be forced to watch that. Yeah, that would be bad. Maybe. That's the worst. Right. Her and her dad run a ski resort and she's <laughs> and and I hope it, you know, then this guy comes through and they they have a you know, they it have it takes a, place in Vermont. Where they have a what do they have that a, a, a kiss meet or a Cute meat, what is it called? And like the girl drops her books. Sounds like you enjoy these. Christmas tree my wife movie. loves them. My wife at Christmas time, it is that at my house. Can we recreate a Hallmark Christmas movie? Yeah. Can easily. we please do that? Yeah. We have to find a guy that we we just dress you up like the woman. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's a good looking, I'll charming meet you guy. Out on the ice and we could fall use and we could use Justin as as the good as the good looking guy in the movie. Yeah, and I'll be like the the school principal yeah. for the kids, you know, like, like there's always That'd be a, a good one. We could base it in a school. Yeah. That'd the kids, the kid's always in trouble, you know, at Christmas. Well, it's cause he lost his dad around Christmas and he's not, time. And, and Santa's not going to bring him anything. Yeah. <laughs> and he's sad about it. And then Justin comes in and, 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 and sweeps you off your feet. He's, a, yeah. he's the school I'm an counselor. investment banker and football coach. At this yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's always like the second act, there's always got to be a thing where they might not get together. Right. Yeah, there has to be. There's yeah. a fork in the road. It's a rom com, yeah. is what it is. But the cheesiest type of rom com is what some it is. other woman. I fell in love with t- a non-binary woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a they them Christmas. <laughs> oh god. Dick they hauled. <laughs> Uh, oh. And and who and, <laughs> they, they, they all, that that will happen for sure. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so then there's the the moment they they're not going to get together, and all of a sudden at the end they get together. He does some romantic gesture. And it's always like she's getting ready to get on an airplane. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, she's finally going back to Montana or whatever. Yeah. And he stops her. Yeah, he you know. does something. Like he couldn't get a cab. All oh, the cabs, like like the last cab drove away. It's like, and it, then like Santa comes through on the sleigh, and then he gets, the takes him to the I airport. Have a Santa suit we can use. I, I I love how like in all those. Ro- it would be really funny to do this now in spring. <laughs> it's nothing like Christmas time. In all those movies, like if they don't get the person onto the plane, it's like they're never going to talk to him again. Like you yeah. just couldn't call him and say, "Hey." I know you went back to Montana, but I'm in love with you, and that's be together. You know, yeah, I have your. I, I remember I had your number. I don't know why I, I, don't know why I was running. I was like killing myself. You made a drastic decision in like two hours, and then changed your mind in <laughs> yeah. another hour. To it's, complete, just, it's the end of the to world. I want to know if these people get their airline tickets refunded, <laughs> or does it like go over on their miles, or how yeah, does that yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. Is there is there a, a romance policy? There's in, a lot of things about not getting on a plane. That is true. The person doesn't get on the plane. It changes the. They should Delta uh, Airlines should have a thing that says, like <laughs> Delta Airlines is not responsible for any errant lovers who might come <laughs> and rescue you before your flight. It is non-refundable. Please decide now if you're in love with him before you get on the plane. <laughs> There's like a, an announcement that's got Green Day in the background. It's always in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, this is your captain speaking. If you are in love, if you are in love with that man from the principal's office, please get off the plane now. We use the Huntington Airport. <laughs> get arrested. The, the Ashland train station. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, the Ashland train station. The, the trains even go by there. Um, it's they, a coal train. <laughs> it's a coal train. Yeah, I have to get on this train. <laughs> it's Santa delivering all the coal for the bad kids. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that, those are the worst movies ever. God, they're so. And bad. they make like twenty billion. Listen, I have on my Fire Stick. I have this thing where it plays movies over and over and over again. So it have like sci-fi, or it'll just play like 
let's say you love Rush Hour. It'll play the movie Rush Hour over and over again. <laughs> or it'll play Back to the Future's back, back to back. I back love Rush Hour. <laughs> me, me, me too. And But one, at the top of it is always, always the Christmas movies. And it plays Christmas movies all year round, all the time. And then it goes down to Hallmark, and you can watch Hallmark movies until you're dead. <laughs> like, like somebody's got that on just repeat, just just digesting that that easily, just innocuous crap that it is. Um, <laughs> I guess I could make my own personal health if I wanted to. Just sit in that chair and watch Christmas movies till I waste food. <laughs> okay, so we now know what the movies that would be playing in hell. What kind of? You didn't share yours. Oh, mine, mine. I think I, that would that would be mine, oh, or right. or it would be, um, any show on CBS. Like like CBS is the worst <laughs> network ever. It would just be CBS. No, the I think time. the Hallmark is way worse. It is, but CBS is all those awful. shows that they show now, like late night, are all terrible. Yeah, every super, single one. Who yeah. watches that shit? Like the blacklist. Good God, what an awful show! I like, haven't watched cable TV. Days of Our Lives, soap operas. Man, those are so bad. Well, those are like years and years of storyline. Yeah. Like, I remember this guy named my mom watched. I think it's Days of Our Lives, and his name was Frisco Jones. <laughs> What's his name? And he had a glorious mullet. So when I went to the get my hair cut, and I was about, I don't know, six or something like that. Maybe even, I'd have been 10. I don't know. And I said, I want the Frisco Jones. <laughs> when I when I get going. And there he did. have the, like a sex position. <laughs> Frisco Jones. Or a, or a hamburger. <laughs> it, could be, it could be both a hamburger or, or a historical black and baseball it. player. <laughs> now batting Frisco Jones. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a cool name. I'd eat that hamburger for sure. <laughs> it's got cheese. It's got three types of cheeses. Thousand Island yep. dressing. Thousand Island dressing. Mm-hmm. Lettuce, old fashioned lettuce. And, and a, a used eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sesame seed bun. Is this it? Another on the sesame seed bun. Of the Frisco, that's it. Next Wednesday, we're having the Frisco Jones. Yeah. Get your grill going. We're, I'm making it. <laughs> you gotta have the thousand island dressing. That is important. <laughs> you gotta have that. <laughs> that's funny. A, mo- a, mo- a movie would probably be. I've said this before. Is Big Top Pee Wee's the worst movie of all time? <laughs> oh so yeah, that yeah, is. I've said that. that is. That would be. I would hate that for sure. Or any Bridget Jones movie. You know I'm talking about Bridget Jones. We'll see. Air Bud. Here's the thing about this, though. You're revealing a lot because in order to know that it's the worst movie, <laughs> I had to you had it. to have seen it. So you just confessed <laughs> to us that you've seen all of the Bridget Jones movies. <laughs> well, yeah. no. well, here's the thing. One, when I was dating this girl and she said, she dating, I was dating this girl and she, and I've talked about her before. I almost married her and all that. And she was very crafty and she said, hey, I want to watch this movie tonight. It's called it's called um i don't know blue forever or something and 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 i was like okay that sounds cool but the real title of the movie was bridget jones blue forever so i got tricked into seeing this bridget jones movie i took her to the movie i didn't know it was bridget jones movie until i got in there and of course bridget jones she she related to frisco (laughs) yeah <laughs> that, that's our two characters' names for the Hallmark movie. Bridget and Frisco Jones. <laughs> uh, and they have a hamburger uh, this is, joint. They have a hamburger the classic joint. love story. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, they. Brisket Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Brisket Jones. <laughs> he really liked her burnt end. <laughs> Oh god! I mean, you know what Bridget Jones is about, right? Yeah. No, I have is no clue. Like, I thought it was a little girl that spies on stuff. No, oh, what are you? T- I don't know what, what I'm thinking of. Then. <laughs> that movie sounds way more interesting. Though. That sounds great. This I it was is like a, a mystery. It's like a middle-aged me. woman. It's oh. what's her name? Uh, I forget her name. She was in on the movie Cold Mountain. 
anyway, <laughs> anyway, the sequel Hot Hills. Not Hot Hills. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she, she's like this girl, and she writes in her diary, and she's always like, "I'm so fat, nobody loves me." And then she always finds a guy, and it's, it's basically I'm like fat, it's, nobody it's, loves me. It's basically what it is. It's like That's she's my awkward. autobiography. <laughs> He's awkward, and she and she always finds a guy, and you know, it's just, it basically like a Hallmark movie, but. More uh, to higher budget. I forget the huh. I forget the the, the, the the actress's name, but anyway, Hugh Grant's Hugh, Hugh Grant's usually in the movie, too. Anyway, yeah. whatever happened to Hugh Grant? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Chris. This podcast went from the Bible. To what happened to Hugh Grant? <laughs> what happened to Hugh Grant? He was, he was from the, the Holocaust he, to Hugh Grant. He was the bomb. <laughs> He did have a. He got caught with a prostitute. I think is what happened. I wonder if Bridget Jones oh, yeah, believes in the Holocaust. <laughs> Pro, yeah, she does. They, they think they cover that in Bridget Jones four. Uh, <laughs> what if they did like a, an Indiana Jones Bridget off. Jones? It's the the the, 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 the underscore title is I'm going to get this right. <laughs> Bridget Jones <laughs> six million reasons why investigates Auschwitz. <laughs> God, <laughs> Jesus, help us! Uh, Jesus, take the wheel, drive it right off the cliff. <laughs> yes, oh man! Uh, oh, oh, we're not on drugs. We're just like this. <laughs> like, yeah. It's um. <laughs> okay, so if you had to cut off one appendage, <laughs> what would it be? A pinky toe. Your pinky toe. You would just fall over all the time. No, you wouldn't. You would. Foreskin. <laughs> well, that's already done. So, it's not an appendage. It's only Take part of it. Just into the top of Mount Sinai. And... <laughs> can't God see. said you don't have to chop it off anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the worst. Like That's the weirdest thing in... like. Can we not get into circumstances? <laughs> yeah. I will beg you. And it doesn't count because it's you're just cutting off part of an appendage. So. Oh, gotcha. Your pinky toe. Pinky toe. You would fall over a, a lot. You balance on your pinky toe. Nice. That's fake science. <laughs> okay, let's. I'll, just, I'll I'll put like a skittle down there and tape it to it. <laughs> tape it to the nub. Okay. Okay. My wooden, mid, my have a wooden my pinky toe. Second toe. Then. I guess that would be. The least noticeable, noticeable, it's the smallest, definitely. The yeah, it would well, be the most least. For some people, <laughs> what if you have it's the smallest thing you could cut what off. What if you have webbed feet? Well, that's not the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be the least circumstantial thing you could cut off. There's a pinky toe, right? Yeah, I would think so. Okay, well, I it's feel like there, it would like... hurt you when you're running. It would be better off to cut mm. off your pinky hand no that'd be way worse then how could you drink tea properly <laughs> <laughs> how can you judge others through the window like kermit the frog yeah yeah how could you do that um that is probably the if you had to cut off one like yeah. a, okay. there's no other answer i don't know i don't think there is do you have a better answer justin I all of my fingers, but my middle fingers. So I just walk around and flip people yeah. off all day. You would just get just cut off yeah. eight fingers. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah, pinky toe is good. Cutting off an ear would be somebody's calling you aesthetically, unless Jesus was around, then he could put it back on. Right? Yeah. yeah. Technically, he could probably put anything back on. You could put that pinky toe right back on. Right. You're right. Yeah. Today you shall be with me in paradise. What's that? Pinky toes. <laughs> old old joke. The guy he was driving a convertible with his coon dog, and something fell off the back of a truck and cut off the coon dog's head. And the doctor <laughs> said, the "Doctor said you could have brought, you could have brought the coon. I could have sewed the coon dog's head back on, but you put him in the plastic bag and it's, he suffocated." <laughs> what? That's what? the worst. <laughs> uh, something like that. I just completely botched it, but. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Oh my god. I'm not a joke teller. <laughs> I don't claim to be. I 
<laughs> oh, okay, God. so we're going to cut off our pinky toe. Yeah. What if you had to lose one sense? I give her six senses. That's uh, five, not six. Is there? Well, maybe you have five, but I've got you have six. six. You have six. You have your third eye. That's right. All right. <laughs> I'm a deep I'm third a deep eye person. Blind. I'm a third eye person. I, don't know. <laughs> I get like let's weigh this out. Smell would smell. Would I can't be. smell as it is. <laughs> yeah. get COVID. Smell would seeing is important. Yeah, there's no way. Of seeing. I mean, taste. I love tasting things, but then the advantage would be <laughs> like if you were like going out Touch. with a really smelly girl. <laughs> If you couldn't That's fish, the first thing you thought with a fish market. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> smell would would. What if you couldn't smell like? If if your smell losing your sense of smell wouldn't affect your taste, but I would say smell. But they're connected, right? So it's kind yeah. of hard. Is that you definitely want to hear? I would I would want to lose my hearing after listening to that last joke Justin told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, in the sense of touch. That'd be bad because you could like hurt yourself. Yeah, you could just like you put your hand know. on a stove yeah. burner. Yeah. And just, there was this guy who was he was a, one of the drummers in uh, my band, and he had a leg that had he had no feeling in. Like he, he wasn't that great of a drummer, but anyway, he, he had one I'm still leg. Thinking about how bad my joke was. Sorry, good. Please. And then the, the raccoon <laughs> was in a bag, and um. <laughs> And it was dead. And the doctor said, <laughs> "Well, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we can not, do about not, it. it. Sounds like Nothing you made, we can do about this. You severed made head. that jug up on the spot. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> What's actually the joke? I just made it up. And it was funny. It's not even a coon. Or a coon. It's a it's a coon dog. <laughs> oh. And it got decapitated. <laughs> Why would some? What was the dog? Was the dog running in front of the car? <laughs> the dog. How did something was, fall was off? The, it was, it was riding in a convertible. The dog was taller than the guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> what was it? Scooby Doo. Ruh roh, rook out, Rocky. Who comes out drunk? <laughs> if it was, a, if it was like a Great Dane, okay, you know, it's somewhat believable. <laughs> Oh, it's a. We <laughs> so, might have to have a section where it's Scooby Doo. Justin, Justin tells a joke section. Justin tells a joke. Oh, I was kind of disturbed by the joke. I was like, "This poor dog." <laughs> it started out immediately grim. Just, Dogs just, ever. Just the shits his pants segment. <laughs> A dog's, oh. a, if, what could have the dog's head been out the window? And not, why did there have to be a convertible? <laughs> <laughs> this is, that just that, that doesn't hold water, Chris. It has to be a convertible. It's to be a convertible. It's, it's a, the coon dog was riding on the hood of the car. He was surfing on top of the van like Styles on, on what's it, Teen Wolf? Yeah, Teen Wolf. How many people probably got really hurt after that movie because they tried it? Oh. You know, I heard that that's where how Jackass got started. They all saw that movie, and then they started at the CKY. I'm just joking; it's not true. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Yeah, that's that could have been the catalyst for the the Jackass fame. All, all the Jack, Teen Wolf. all the Jack ass guys. Um, they're all got they all got sober. Mm-hmm. Or they died. That's typically how it yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they were living a lifestyle. I can't believe they didn't die sooner. Right. I really think only one of them died, though, right? Only one yeah. of them died. The rest Adam of them. Adam Dunn. Were... Ryan Dunn did die. Ryan. Adam Dunn. I mean, Adam Ryan. Dunn was the Reds' first baseman. <laughs> yeah. But Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn. Steve, o, have... Steve runs a successful podcast out of a van right now. Yeah. And he rehashes his, his life. He's been clean. It's like for vegan, like, too, or something. He's been clean for like 14 years or something like that. And then you got Johnny Knoxville. He comes know. from like a successful family in entertainment. Who? Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, he does. He kind of started it all. With yeah. Him. And then Bam is in and out of rehab all the time. If you get an He was on Dr. Phil. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it, but he talks about. I have on his Instagram. He talks about Dr. Phil all the time. Like he's always. Putting his entire life on there. I love Viva La Bam. That was a great show. <clears throat> I think he was a genius. I think he just 
really got caught. I mean, he's still struggling. He made fun of his dad and then turned into him. <laughs> like that was kind of ironic. Yeah, he 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 he, kind of, he just terrorized. You know, Tom Green did the same thing. Yeah, he was the original. Yeah, and Tom Green's also traveling in a van. Yeah, that's what happens. You go on MTV, <laughs> you get famous, and all of a sudden yeah. your career is having a podcast out of a van. That's the well, when this path. podcast becomes successful, we'll be doing it out of a van. Yeah, yeah, we're not there yet. We're still yeah. on it. We're not in a. We're not in a moving. Can it be a flamed van? We can put flames on it if you want. <laughs> and we can have as many <clears throat> pairs of vans as we want. Well, <laughs> we've run the gamut, I believe. I think if there's anything we've learned today, mm-hmm. it's that I will never tell another <laughs> joke. It's, no, it's, you're going to tell some more jokes. No, That's what funny. we've learned today is out of every tragedy, rises a great yeah. awakening that is true. Mm-hmm. and that is true. don't ever take your coon dog in a convertible <laughs> <laughs> and with that said you can choose love or no love Thank you for listening to the Invisible Wires podcast. You can email us at invisiblewirespodcast at gmail.com. You can interface with us on Instagram at invisible underscore wires. We appreciate you listening, and we hope you have a great week.